Mark Doner is a social media creator from Cleveland, Ohio, who has amassed more than 8 million followers across all platforms. He started his YouTube journey at Ohio University, where he majored in broadcast journalism. While in college, he met Logan Paul and started working as his videographer and editor. From there, they moved to Los Angeles in 2015, where he continued to work for Logan before starting to make his own comedic skits. He grew his following to more than half a million on Instagram in just one year, then decided to start a daily vlog channel on YouTube, where he filmed every day of his life for two years straight, growing his YouTube audience to nearly two million subscribers. Since then, Mark has become a social media personality, most recently creating his own podcast called Living Large, and has also ventured into music with his songs accumulating more than 50 million streams. What an intro, man. Practice in the mirror. <laughs> I, need you, I need you to do that every time I walk in a room. Yeah, that'd make me feel good. That's too. crazy. We've known each other 10 years. I know. Time really does fly. Do you remember how we met? Yeah, Bed Bath & Beyond. Bed right? Bath & Beyond. <laughs> I was moving into 1600 Vine like the same time you... Literally like yeah. same couple days I, I moved in there. Yeah, you and Logan were buying bed sheets. For, like, my, yeah, yeah. for my air mattress. Yeah. Oh, you had an air mattress. Yeah. I just remember like going into that apartment and it was just like it was you jake logan Alyssa was in the closet it was just like mm -hmm. was i was like, in the closet you were in the closet yeah i finally came out nice congrats <laughs> that's big <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 but yeah it was just like but that that was the thing then too it's just like everyone was just trying to make it there was mm -hmm. it, coincidentally everyone was living in this one building on vine street yeah doing vine but yeah i'm glad we met because um yeah i feel like we were doing similar stuff too like mm -hmm. at, at the time I was like still kind of shooting stuff with Usher, but I remember like the first day I moved in, bumped into like Rudy and mm. Jeff Wittick and um, that like right away, they're like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I film and stuff. And they're like, oh, let's shoot a sketch right now. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was just like a whole new like world, just like everyone, it almost felt like, like I had already been in college, but it felt like everyone's mm -hmm. kind of like post high school college thing. And everyone was just like, the doors were always unlocked right. and people were hoverboarding in and out of right. each other's apartments. Yeah. What was your, because you're originally from Ohio, right? Mm -hmm. What was like your thought process and how did you feel like moving to LA and like moving into that building? Like what was that time in your life? I like? had a similar experience. I felt the same way. I yeah. felt, because I just came from college right out to there. Yeah. And yeah, like you said, everybody's door was always open. And if you needed to film content, like if you needed an actor in one of your skits or whatever, you could ask anyone. And if someone said no, yeah. then you could ask another person. It was just like a literal fraternity of social media stars. Yeah. Uh, did you move in there because of that or do you just coincidentally? I was looking to move to L.A. anyway because I was living in New York. Mm -hmm. And like I, like I said, I was touring with Usher and he was moving to L.A. And I was just like, all right, I might as well like swap coasts. And I asked a friend, Al Alfredo Flores, who was like filming with um, Bieber at the time, like, do you mm -hmm. know of like an apartment building I should look at? And he was like, oh, I, my friend King Batch just moved into this apartment building. Like, you should take a look at it. And it was the first one I saw. And the day I like saw it, I just like signed the lease and moved in. I was like, mm -hmm. do you have anything that overlooks the, the pool? Because there was like a yeah, pool yeah. right there. And they were like, yeah, yeah, here's something on the seventh floor. And yeah, I just like literally signed the lease. And the next week I, I moved in. But I had no idea or concept of like, Mm -hmm. vine or any of that stuff so like when i moved in and all of a sudden it was just like people around the sim same age like making creative stuff it, it like i don't know it just it felt like it happened so fast and it was just so cool just to be around that that energy did you did you guys know like what was the deal with that building or like well logan flew me out to be his oh, okay. videographer and i feel like me and you really elevated the content because i flew out at a time when vine was kind of on the dying side of it okay and logan wanted to start a youtube channel and Got then it. the instagram skits started to happen yeah so you know me and you we were shooting everyone's content on dslrs yeah but when i got there everybody was using a phone mm -hmm. and it's not something that i was used to because i came from the camera background yeah and then you know I, i'm using my steady cam and like trying to like amp up the level yeah and what was the question again <laughs> <laughs> or just like what it felt like to move to LA oh yeah and like what like yeah, what, what that time in your life was like, did you like it? It was, you know, it was really exciting yeah. at first, I would say. Um, I was eager. I was just, like I said, I was, we had a two bedroom apartment the, on the penthouse floor, apartment 850. And I slept on an air mattress. I think it was like a 
twin or full size air mattress mm -hmm. and it fit perfectly in Logan's walk-in closet. So he was sleeping in his bed and through the closet to the bathroom was where I slept. And we just had like a curtain up that separated our rooms to give us a little bit of privacy. But yeah, I mean, his clothes were above me and I was still taking college classes at the time. Wow. Um, I moved out after my junior year and I was taking them online. And then I would take uh, a little Honda Grom, like Logan had this little Honda Grom. I don't know if you know what that is. It's like a tiny uh, motorcycle. Oh, wow. Not like a full size one. Yeah. And I would drive that all the way to Northridge from Hollywood. 45 minutes and I'm six foot four on this little bike <laughs> that maxes out at like 50 miles an hour Great. and I would drive up there and take like proctored exams to graduate college uh, but it was a grind and I, I mean I really had a good time until like I would say like a lot more people started moving in like when Jake was building the team 10 part of it it yeah. was just like I mean I, I I was a little bit older than everybody else. I went to college. I kind of learned a little bit about responsibilities and the apartment was just constantly filthy. I mean, we didn't have furniture. It was just a bunch of bean bags around. I remember it was just like love sack brand, yeah. brand deals and it was just giant love sacks yeah. throughout the- I think apartment. we had like six or seven love sacks. Just like, jumping from like love sacks. Yeah, love sack. literally. And we just had them pushed to the corner and we would just hoverboard and like do races in there. Yeah. Um, so, it, I mean, it was tough when Jake had like eight people living there and it you could, didn't really have much privacy yeah and at the time you were you were like mostly a shooter right and then mm -hmm. they were like you would sometimes be in sketches like if they needed another person kind of but yeah i more so shot and yeah. i did all of logan's stuff uh, i started editing his youtube videos i'd help him with the skits obviously and then yeah i think he just got busy mm -hmm. and i was sitting around a lot so i started helping out other creators like amanda cerny hannah stocking and I kind of just negotiated with them because I realized like when I was getting that filmed by tag, yeah. I wasn't really growing any followers. So I kind of negotiated like, hey, can I'll shoot this skit for you. Can you be in a skit for me? Yeah. So then, you know, I was able to build my following off of like the collaborations with these bigger influencers. But, you know, after you start living someone else's life for so long, you mm. kind of wake up and you're like, well, do I want to live this guy's life the rest of my life or do I want to live my life? So that's when I started like, I was already doing all that stuff for him. Yeah. So I was like, I could just do this for me with all this free time. And then that's how I started to get into like the skit side of things. And I hit it at the right time. And I didn't know this, but looking back now, it's like when a platform introduces a new feature, you're supposed to attack that feature. And I just happened to get lucky because Instagram introduced 60 second video. Mm. And I remember everyone was like, what the hell? Like it used to be 50 or it was six seconds on vine then 15 seconds now they want a minute yeah and i just attacked that minute long feature and then all my videos were getting on the explore page and i started growing yeah i remember when it was for like even on vine it's like you, you would do hashtag comedy or you try yeah, yeah. to like a, like yeah attack the certain thing that was like mm -hmm. kind of trending but yeah i guess you kind of touched on it but what was your when when did you realize you're like okay i don't want to just be like a shooter or like were you conscious of like i need to start putting my face in things because i mm. think now it's like everyone has this kind of awareness of like being face forward to the camera mm. or even if you are a videographer and editor there's so many people that are doing tutorials or that are mm. doing gear reviews or podcasts yeah. or whatever it may be it's like so like were you aware you're like okay well you know obviously you didn't want to live someone else's life but were you aware you're like okay maybe i should start showing my face more and like mm -hmm. that's the way i can take ownership of my life a little bit yeah like i said i wasn't growing many fault like I, I was getting tagged as filmed by mark donor or photo by mark donor yeah but i wasn't really growing and these people had millions of followers so i'm like why are other people growing so much and i'm not like they're tagging me they have millions of followers i should be getting followers and that's when I realized like I need to be in this stuff. Mm. So yeah, I would shoot something for like Amanda Cerny and I'd be like, hey, can you put me in it for a scene like as an extra or whatever and tag me so that people could see my face. Yeah. And I did go to college for broadcast journalism. And when I did get there, the reason I did get into the behind the scenes tech stuff was because as a freshman, they wouldn't let me on air because you had to work your way up to get on air. It was like seniors and juniors. Mm. So freshmen wouldn't put me on air for TV. So I was like, well, how can I get involved? And they're like, well, we need more tech people. And I was like, all right, what do you need me to do? And they're like, they gave me a camera. They're like, you can go film high school sports. And funny enough, I went to school at Ohio University and I got to film Joe Burrow when he was in mm. high school. He played at Athens High School and that's in, Ohio University is in Athens, Ohio. 
So they sent me out with a camera to like do a test shoot for football. And they were like, oh, you're pretty good at this. And then I was like, what else can I do? They're like, well, you can edit like a mini pack. And I'd never edited before except like one little project in high school. Um, when I didn't even have a laptop until I went to high school, I had to borrow my buddies. But I edited this like one minute mini pack and I was like searching up YouTube tutorials on like how to do shit on Final Cut Pro 7. Mm. And I edited it and turned it in and they were like, you, you never edited before? I was like, no, I just did like a little music, fake music video for my high school psychology project. And they're like, this is better than the seniors. Mm -hmm. So I guess I like had a natural talent and eye for, oh, voice crack. There you go. I guess I had a natural talent and eye for like, I don't know, editing. And that's what got me into the tech stuff. And then I met Logan and it's so funny, like how I met Logan, I, uh, I knew he went to our school and I knew he did Vine stuff and I was making YouTube videos. I started to make like party videos too on YouTube because I was really inspired by Devin Supertramp and then Casey and I set started daily vlogging when I was in college. So I made these like party YouTube videos and I ran into him at like a party at Ohio University and I was like filming everybody and I think that he saw that I was working when everybody else was drinking. And I remember I was walking back from class one time and I like looked over and like that was his apartment. Like I walked past his apartment. I saw him in the window. I was like, oh, now I know where this guy lives. Bro, I used to uh, take that route every day in hopes of bumping into him really? so that we could start working together. I don't think I ever bumped into him, but finally I just, uh, after I met him at the party, I DM'd him on Twitter and I was like, hey bro, I, I met you at the party. I was the guy filming. Do you, do you want to create some content? And then he's like, yeah, dude, let's do it. So we started filming back actually in Cleveland where he lives and where I'm from. And we started making YouTube videos and then he flew out to Los Angeles and he would bring me out like for weekends at a time and film and then I'd go back to school and that's kind of how that relationship built. Just two guys trying, to, two guys who were both passionate about like social media and creating videos, which was very rare back in the day. Yeah. I feel like even now it's like, cause I like the term then was like collaborating. It was almost yeah. like this unwritten thing. We'd be like, do you want to collab on something? And it was this very like barter exchange where it's like, mm -hmm. I'll help shoot or just do something for you and like you're mentioning it's like you, okay now you're gonna help and do something with me maybe you'll be in my sketch or whatever it may be it's like a way of like i feel like now do you find that collaborating is almost like harder like everyone's mm -hmm. like oh like aware now of what you know what value there is in it or like the exchange of what someone wants is a bit mm -hmm. different i don't know because i've run into those like issues even now it's like i just try to be fully transparent when even when i have a conversation with someone it's like do you want like like money for your services if you're mm -hmm. helping me film or whatever? Or like, what is the expectations from this? What is the deliverables from this? Cause it's like, I feel like the term collab became such like, just like a vague blanket statement. Mm -hmm. And like now it's like, I think everyone's just so aware of like the value of social media, the value of creating content. Mm -hmm. Like how, how do you find collaborating now? I think it's changed a lot. Yeah. I think everyone used to have no problem collabing. Yeah. And then I think maybe ego got involved and it was like, oh, I'm, I'm, my time's a little bit more valuable and I'm bringing more to the table with my, the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. It is a little bit different. I remember like back in the day, getting a tag was like hard. Yeah. People like wouldn't tag you for. Especially if you were filming. If, yeah, yeah. If you were filming or if they paid you. And I used to describe it. I'm like, okay, so if you go and you're in a movie and you get it paid to be in the movie, do you still want your name on the poster or the credits? Yeah. They paid you. Mm -hmm. It's like, dude, you're still doing the work. You deserve to be credited for your work. Yeah. And yeah, like back in the day, I remember getting like frustrated about that. I'm like, dude, especially if I wasn't being paid and I wasn't being tagged. Oh, it's yeah. like, what am I doing? You know, taking my time out of my day to help you and you can't help me. But I think people, I mean, that's how, everyone on Vine got successful because everyone was collaborating. It was tag for tag. And you, yeah. when you collaborate on that level, the chances of going viral and getting your face seen are exponential because all those Viners are posting every single day. And if you're in their video and one of them takes off, you're gonna grow from that. And I think as people got older and they moved out of 1600 Vine, they kind of wanted to do it for themselves and the collaboration kind of fell apart. Yeah. But in a way, you know, people are still collaborating with podcasts, but I think on the level of like building a team, it's kind of become more solo. I think everything's become a little business minded. And, mm -hmm. I've all, and I almost like I equated to people too. I was just like, it became like the Hunger Games, whereas like 1600 Vine was just like, 
everyone was like living amongst each other and there wasn't this like thought process of like i'm this you're that like it started to become a little like clicky towards mm -hmm. the end as vine was like dying and everyone was like the egos were starting to form but it almost became like the hunger games where people were, like i'm district three or like i'm team 10 i'm yeah. just like i only like shoot with these people i only do these mm -hmm. things and i think it yeah it came from this like weird competitive nature where it was like you know i'm as everyone ever got older and they wanted to establish themselves yeah. a bit more they're like i'm less of being more open because it, it was like a smaller it almost was like um it was like a fish tank it was really small everyone mm -hmm. was shooting with each other like most of vine was being shot in like one building which was yeah. like crazy like the top like 20 viners were all mm -hmm. in one building and then now and then now it's like a giant ocean of content right. creators are so like all over the world everything mm -hmm. but yeah it's I, a new generation it is and yeah like you said like I guess it, me, Logan, and George kind of paired or like trioed up and did our thing together. Jake did Team Ten. You had the Vlog Squad, and it was like kind of unheard of to like go collab with those other groups. And I even went on a guy's podcast who was in the Vlog Vlog Squad, and I even told him, I'm like, yeah, I don't know. There was something like intimidating about like reaching out to you guys because it felt like you guys don't hang out with anyone else but yourselves. And I'm sure that everybody else probably felt a similar way. Yeah, it also, it, like, LA is a difficult place to be, too, because, like, I can understand the thought process, too, where it's, like, everyone kind of wants something from you, and all of a sudden, if you're young and you're you're kind of climbing the social ladder, even normal interactions become very strange, where people mm -hmm. are just, like, you know, like, clout chasers, or they, like, they kind of, like, you start to meet people that just, like, don't have good intentions, and mm -hmm. they want something from you, and it, even, like, older people, you think you're gonna meet someone who's, like, in their 40s or 50s, yeah. and they're just, like, hungry agents or, like, managers, and it's, like, you can meet really strange people, so I think in a weird way, if you're younger and you're starting to grow a following and you're making money and stuff, it's, like, it's kind of a way to insulate yourself. You're, like, all right, I know these are the eight people that I can trust or the four or three people mm -hmm. that I, like, grew up with or went to school yeah. with, like, like, we're gonna make our little bubble, and then it almost becomes this, like, I, I find it it's like a fear thing you know I try not to like be like oh they're they're assholes because they don't want to like socialize or like interact with other people I find it all like it, it really just comes down from like fear they're like I don't know like what people want if they like want something for right. me or you know but yeah I mean I guess it all I mean we're aging right yeah. like I and I think that's the natural progression of aging the older you get the closer knit your circle gets mm -hmm. and you kind of I don't know we're all you know on this earth doing life for the first time and yeah, when you get older, I guess your circle gets smaller and you lose friends and it can't be that way for forever. Like at some point I had to grow out of the college phase. I remember when I first moved to LA, I was like, I had a serious FOMO at 21, not being in college for my senior year. Yeah. And I would, when college started, I would look at an Instagram story and be like, oh dude, they're partying, like having such a good time. And I'm here in LA in the real world. But I kind of shifted my mindset at that time. And like, I was like, wait a second, like, they would probably much rather be me right now than I would be them. Like, they'd rather be in LA doing all this stuff and having fun than be stuck at college, like, taking classes. So I think the shift in perspective, but yeah, I mean, it was a really good time and a really memorable era of my life, and I'm, like, super thankful for it. For sure. Yeah, and the grass is always green on the other side right. type of thing. It's like you could always look at it from the other vantage point, but, I mean, it's cool to see all the stuff you've done on your own do you, do you think your main focus right now is like podcasting or where do you think your like attention has shifted to? Yeah, I think as I get older, podcasting, I think I would like to host one day, get back to like what I went to college for. It was really fun doing that. But, you know, I have a, I, I don't really like the mainstream media and then the messages that they send across. And it's always been the same. And I think that this is the reason I got out of it was because, you know, even in school, I went to the Scripps College of Journalism, which was like, I think top 10 in the country for journalism where I went. And just the way they taught us to like structure the news was always negative. You know, you lead in the beginning with negative stuff. You tease it till the end. So people watch the whole thing to get to that negative thing. And it's just like anything with shock value, robberies, murders, fires, like police, whatever it was, is like, that's all the news has become. And we, you know, we, you learn about like sensationalism and journalistic integrity. And I think nowadays there's just none of that. Like, how do you know that CNN is Democratic and Fox is Republican? That should not be a thing. Like, you should report the news. You shouldn't be giving your opinions. And the news has just become that. But my focus, yeah, I, I'm really seeing a lot of success with my podcast, especially on TikTok. 
and just telling stories. I've always loved telling stories and especially other people's stories and structuring that. And I think, you know, interviewing is something that's fun to me. And I get to do all the technical stuff of it too, like edit it. And now they have like AI with, I, I edit my podcast on like Autopod and yeah, it's like, it takes like 30 seconds. <laughs> um, are you doing all your social clips too, or you have mm-hmm. someone helping? Yeah. I, I, so the reason I actually started posting my podcast on TikTok, I, I posted like a five year old episode on TikTok one day because I was laying in bed and a buddy of mine who there's a movie made after, after him, the 1517 to Paris, he stopped a terrorist attack on a on a train in paris and i was laying in bed and this was when i was in a relationship and we were in long distance relationship and i was just bored and i've been looking for like a shift in my career because i hadn't made it yet so i was like oh screw it like he posted eight year anniversary of this you know attack and i was like you know what i interviewed him and i see a ton of podcast clips on tiktok let me just go into my room download the interview and edit something together and see how it does so I go in there, it's like 5 p.m. Um, I edit it, I post it at like 7 or 8 p.m., and which is not a good time to post typically. And I was like, all right, we'll just see how it does. Doesn't really do well, and I'm like, whatever, should I delete it? I was like, no, nah, I'll just leave it up. I wake up in the morning and it went viral. And I was like, oh, okay, let me post part two of this story. That one also went viral. And I was like, all right, let me post part three. <laughs> that one also went viral. And then I posted part four and that went viral. And I was like, okay. I have like 70 something episodes from five years ago, which is evergreen content. Like they're story based. It's not really current events. So then I, I was getting on a flight back to Ohio to visit my family. And I edited down a, an episode that I did with my friend, Kevin Hines, who he jumped off the golden gate bridge about 23 years ago and survived. He's one of like 40 survivors. So I posted that clip and it was like, honestly like a five minute clip ended up getting 28 million views and I was like oh my god like people are really gravitating towards these stories Mm. and that was the decision I made that decision to bring the podcast back because I stopped it during COVID just because it was becoming too much and I didn't really have anything to talk about during COVID nothing was happening you know the world was shut down and yeah so I decided to bring the podcast back and I've had some really good guests on there and I'm trying to get you know even better guests eventually but You know, rebuilding that has been tough, but I know that if I stick with it and you know how this world works, just consistency and constantly getting your face out there. But to get back to your question, yes, I edit all my clips and I've, you know, I've hired a couple editors to do some and I've just noticed that there's something about the way that I do it that works. And when I upload the ones that the other people do, it just doesn't work. And I don't know what it is. Some people don't have the eye, I guess, for like storytelling or like pacing. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, it is almost like an intangible. It's just mm-hmm. like you can find some of this like very technical, but it's like knowing the feeling of it or right. like having that kind of like eye is, is really something. And also, it's like if I know it's more work, but if you're the one having the conversation and you're the one setting up the camera mm-hmm. and you're the one like even as y- you have the hindsight to be like, oh, this bit is going to be like th- this was interesting. This felt right. good in this r- the room or this is like <clears throat> the song that would go well with it right. or this is like the B-roll or whatever. It's like just knowing all those moving pieces. And I think with stuff emotional, like a lot of these editors and you see it, it, they cut emotion out. Mm. They cut so quick and they're putting all these text, animated texts on screen and (laughs) all these sound effects. And when someone's talking about something emotional and they pause like that and and they're having a hard time finding their words, Mm. it's important to leave that in because it shows emotion. Like, damn, this person's really struggling to talk about this thing. And if you just cut out that breath, you have to know when and when not to cut out that, that like emotion. Yeah. And I find like every, I feel like for the longest time, we're always saying it's like the ADD generation. It's mm-hmm. like used to be only six second content or like the Mr. B style of editing where yeah. it's like retention, retention. But yeah. it's like, I love now that there's always this yearning for like, lo- like in a weird way, people would either want to doom scroll and watch quick stuff or they want to watch like a full movie or they want to mm-hmm. watch a long TV series or watch like just true stories. And it's nice that like, I feel like there always will be an audience for just like that human yeah. connection. So as long as you can like show that and you can feel like there's, you don't need to cut out the emotion mm-hmm. of it or, you don't, or like awkward pauses right. or whatever. That's the, that's real. That's what's in life. Uh-huh. So 
Yeah, yeah. I, I honestly, I see a shift, really. It's starting to happen. I think people and these platforms want it, you know? TikTok mm -hmm. wants you to upload a longer video. They want it to be a minute plus, and you can go all the way up to 10 minutes. They want it now to be horizontal. Yeah, they want YouTube. They want. Yeah, it. they want to compete with YouTube. And I do see, I see myself consuming quicker or longer form content. And yeah. thankfully, I mean, I do speed it up. Like you can hold on the screen to, to exit. But you, you know, something I admire about you is you've always been a storyteller and always, you know, put a lot of effort into your craft. And you didn't really adhere to the ADD quick cut like yeah. craze. And I think if you were to upload honestly some of your old YouTube content to TikTok and just format it for that, that it would be really good because your storytelling is amazing, your voiceovers, your sound design, like you're extremely talented at what you do. And I've always looked up to the stuff that you, you put out. Thank you. Yeah, you've been like a an awesome like support. I, I remember you even did like an interview one time. You're like, who's someone on YouTube you like watching? And you're like, you called me after you're like, oh, I gave you a shout out. And I, did this. <laughs> so I was like, oh, dope, dude. Thank you. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess it is because we are a bit, you know, a bit older. And, and like, I enjoy doing stuff with like, you know, what even the younger Viners at the time. But it's like, I never, I always wanted to like slow life down. Mm -hmm. Like, I never... I feel like everyone's always kind of in a race to like get to this imaginary yeah. finish line. And I've always wanted to just be like, can we find a way to like take in the moment and, f and like let it like breathe and like appreciate it. So it's like, even when, even if I don't post for like a year on YouTube, I'm just yeah. like, all right, let me figure out a way to like, if I make something, it just feels like massive. And I feel like we both have the wanting to like make films or just make mm -hmm. longer things. So it's like, you know, every time I make something, and sometimes it can be detrimental because it almost like stops me from making stuff. But at the same time, I'm like, I want to, I want everything I make to be better than the last thing I did. Mm -hmm. And if it's the last thing I made, if I were to like leave this earth, I want someone to be able to look at it and be like, oh, this is who this person was. So it's like, mm -hmm. I try not to rush what I'm making so I can like leave something behind and be like, okay, at least this is how I felt for like, yeah. I don't know, try to summarize life in a post, which is difficult, but like, at least it gets me self-reflecting, you know? Yeah, that was a difficult thing for me because I remember when I was living with Logan, I was posting three vlogs a week and I was editing them and I was exhausted. Mm -hmm. And he was doing daily vlogs. Lance 210 was doing daily vlogs, Casey Neistat, Jake. And he really, I mean, he's like, bro, if you want to scale, you have to start posting every day. You need to get an editor. And I had to give up so much quality to get the quantity mm. because something that you make and those are the, those are the things I love to watch, like stuff that you make, Sam Cold or Devin Supertramp, that shit takes time. Mm -hmm. And if you can't put a video like that out every single day. No, so, impossible. you know, then I got caught in that rat race of constant, you know, getting something out no matter what it was. Like when I was daily vlogging, there'd be times where I was just so exhausted and, uh, I would make like a sit down reaction video at like midnight and send it to my editor because I was like, I have to post something mm. and I didn't really care about it. And yeah, I guess I think a lot of people don't really understand how difficult it is to daily vlog. Yeah. Or just make content yeah. in general. That's why it's like, I try not to be so judgmental now. It's like, mm -hmm. it's so, it, it, you can be so easy to watch something and just shit on it immediately and be like, mm -hmm. You know how long it took just to like set up the yeah. cameras and the lights, make sure the sound like is okay, sound design, da, da, da. even just to like upload it, figure out a thumbnail. Like I feel like everyone now is becoming more self-sufficient at that, but just like try not to shit on people as much. Mm -hmm. I feel like as a culture, we're just like, it's easy to hate, but it's like, you know. Yeah, I get a lot of hate right now, rightfully so. I mean, I've come back to YouTube several times and quit and yeah. you know, my fans are frustrated and I'm, you know, rightfully so. Like. I'm also frustrated that I haven't been able to get it together. And I guess the, the challenges that I face now is I set this expectation and precedent that I'm, I post, I can and I'm capable of posting every day. Mm. But when you make 600, 700 videos, like my struggle now is like ideas. Like I've made, I've talked about everything about my life online and you know, it's like, it's hard to make a YouTube video and change your style after you've made 700 of those videos. And that's kind of like something that I'm struggling with right now is like, and that's why I'm like trying to do the podcast, something a little bit different. I get into music and, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird that like, they, they don't really understand what it takes, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And I feel like everyone, I, I even saw there was like um, a recent survey and it's like the number one aspire to profession for people in high school 
is content creator mm. and then it used to be whatever some, something yeah. else they want to be astronaut, an a- astronaut yeah. athlete doctor yeah. lawyer and it's like now it's like you a lot of celebrity or people that you look up to are these like content creators or like but i think it is yeah i think it is really cool that there's like people like emma chamberlain or like mm-hmm. you know that like that just put a camera down and could just like talk to it and just like show their personality and now that's like a profession if you will you can just like yeah. So it is cool that we're like have this interconnectedness, but yeah, I mean, I there is this, yeah, it, it's a lot of work. I, I get, yeah. I got caught up in, and I made a big mistake in creating a relationship channel mm. fan base because, you know, in in the moment, yeah, I thought you know my my relationships would last forever and we could do this together and building an audience based on a couple. Now that I'm not in a relationship, it's like well. You know, I set the the precedent that this is a couple's channel, and mm. now that's people like Emma Chamberlain and Logan Paul and all these guys. They do so well. It, it was always about them, mm. and my videos were always about us. Yeah. So when you don't have us and you have to like transition, that's kind of the difficult thing because it's like I sit here and I'm like, damn, bro, I have two million followers, but no one wants to watch my videos unless there's a relationship type interest in it. But that's my own fault, and now I have to like dig myself out of that hole and rebrand myself, and it's just gonna take time. I think, that, yeah, I think there's a pro and con too, because it's like obviously the pro is you're sharing your life, and if this you have a person that's involved with your life, it's like yeah, what's let's like share and show this together. But like the only constant in life is change, so mm-hmm. like inevitably there's gonna be a change. Hopefully you grow with people. If you don't, it is what it is, you, right? You know, but yeah, I guess. It is, it is a funny thing to think about. It's like moving forward, if you are, if you get in another relationship or whatever, are you like, am I going to be less likely now to try to like involve this person? Or 100%. Like, yeah, it becomes this thing where it's yeah. like, do I now just like, okay, I focus on me, I focus on my brand and like I have this personal thing. Because even like that can be a con too, but it's like, I don't know. I think that's why like telling bigger stories or just telling stories that are outside of yourself is great mm-hmm. too, because it's like, you know, the, even the podcast podcast clips you were talking about, it's like the focus wasn't on necessary, like, it's not like this person's super famous or I have this mm. person on the podcast because they're like, I need to get this it person on. Yeah, yeah. But it's like this story was really cool. And it's like, if you apply that to your own life too, if like I have this cool story that I want to share of myself, whether it involves another person or not, it's about the the story and whatever. Like I trying to feed an audience mm-hmm. is it's a losing game because it, it is like if they fall in love with you because you're dating this person mm-hmm. awesome if you're not going to be there when i'm not with that person then like oh well like yeah. you know maybe you'll come back around or yeah. like you know but hopefully the style in which you tell stuff and the substance in which you tell it and the integrity in which you tell it mm-hmm. stays constant and then i feel like you know you'll always that'll be like your little nucleus and epicenter and everything else will kind of like fall into place but do you i mean just to even touch on the podcast stuff like are you finding yourself now you just want to have conversations with like are you searching for cool people with cool stories or like stories yeah yeah i want to tell stories um and and share like a more emotional and vulnerable side of people mm. you know i i watch tiktok and it's all all i see is everybody has the same guests on their show yeah you know it's, it's like, like jordan peterson yeah. tony robbins theo vaughn like they, they're they're all the same guests just saying stuff and it's like i really want to tell stories of people because everyone has a story to tell i want to i want to use my platform and my audience to be able to share a story of someone who maybe never would get the light of day to share that story you know like i had a girl parker noriega on her her brother passed away from an accidental fentanyl overdose yeah and you know I got to share her story. I had my buddy Iggy on. He was on The Bachelor. I got to share his story. And, you know, they performed very well. And these are just normal, everyday people who don't do social media. Mm. And, yeah, I think that that's kind of what I want to focus on. Of course, I want to get the big guest so I get a viral clip and blow up my page, you know. But I, I, I like the slow burn maybe right now. Yeah. And I mean, it, again, it's substance at the end of the day and I, and everything's timing, right? Like mm-hmm. if it's meant for you, I'll find you type of thing. So yeah, I think that's the other thing is people always think it's like overnight success, overnight success, mm-hmm. but it's, there's nothing wrong with like slowly climbing up the mountain 
Yeah. Because maybe you're meant to do that. And by the time you reach the top, you're like, oh, I can appreciate it. Because I've seen too many people like skyrocket and then all of a sudden yeah. their, their plummet is. Well, that's yeah. okay. That's the thing about social media. You, you are, it's way better for you to grind for like a year straight and then have a video go viral because you have all that back catalog. If you just blow up on your first video, like it's honestly not good because there's all this sudden pressure and you don't have a back catalog. Um, you know, for YouTube, for me, it took me like three months to get a viral video. And then I had, that's what made me gain all those subscribers was that one big video. And they saw like, oh, this guy's posting consistently every single day. I'm going to follow him. But if like the perfect example that I always give is you remember that song Yellow Hearts mm. by Aunt Saunders? Mm -hmm. That was his first song. Yeah. Where has he been since? Yeah. It's like, dude, your first song did went viral crazy in numbers, but there's never been a song since. And if he had maybe 10 songs before that, that were really good. And then Yellow Hearts popped off, then it would be fine. But now he's competing with Yellow Hearts the rest of the, every time he puts out a song. Yeah. The artificial pressure is real too. We all put so much like pressure on ourselves, especially as like creators in mm. general. It's like, am I, am I needing to feed the algorithm? Am I needing to keep my audience entertained? Am I needing to like, you know, there's, constant comparison that's the only downside that i see so it's like every creator and someone that i talk to it's like i it's, it's almost reassuring in a way how everyone tries to like deal and recharge in their own way it's you know and that's why people who like post in mass and volume like you do or you know anyone who like has daily vlogged in the past or something it's like how important is a recharge pro like how do you appreciate the recharge process now and how do you like approach it do you like obviously COVID forced everyone to hit like a mm -hmm. hard reset, but do you find now that you're just like, all right, I need to take these days to like chill or like, do you, are you just constantly like every day, like trying to grind and like schedule or, or what's that like? Uh, I've never really had a schedule. I mean, I guess when I daily vlogged, I did, but there was no like game plan, like strategy really. It was just push, 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 push. But I recently went down to Arizona and I got the chance to hang out with uh, a big YouTuber, Big Dos TV. Steven Shapiro and Rachel Cook. And these are three people that don't live in LA. Mm. Rachel did live in LA at one point. She moved to Vegas. She moved back to Washington. She moved to Florida. Big Dos TV and Steven, they've lived down in Arizona the whole time. And honestly, it was a really, it was a breath of fresh air because it feels like a rat race out here. And to see that the way they live and how content they are with their wife and kids and dog and like, the pace was slower and it felt really good. And I think that that's something I'm seeking now that I'm 30. I don't feel that I have to be in LA. And if I do want to do an interview, I could fly out here and you know book an Airbnb for a week and knock out a few interviews. But there was something refreshing about no, no traffic, nice weather, just a, having a house and a slower life. And I think that that's something that I want to seek now after I've, I mean, I've been here for 10 years and I think I've done what I had to do in my 20s and now that I'm 30 I'm kind of looking to build a future um because you've been talking about moving out of LA so, for dude minute. I wrote a song called no love in LA like and five then, years ago <laughs> I feel like every time we like re-bump into each other you were talking about like heading out or so you think you're leaning towards that direction again or yeah I just want to slow down and I didn't realize how much time I spend in traffic mm. And I always wonder, like, why does time always move so fast in L.A.? It's because it takes me 25 minutes to get to the gym and then I work out and then it takes me 25 minutes to get back uh, and whatever to go up the elevator. That's an hour right there to come over here, you know, is 25 minutes and then the drive back is probably going to take a little longer because I'm going back into downtown. So I'm spending three, four hours a day in my car. Yeah. So no wonder time moves fast because I'm not doing anything for four hours of my day. <laughs> yeah, a lot of just in between time. <clears throat> yeah. I, f I find like it's less of where you are. I feel like a lot of times people like, you know, especially when we first came out here, it's like there's an it place to be. Yeah. And there's it people to be around. Mm -hmm. And I think like, you know, we both have realized it's way less of that now, especially mm -hmm. since like social media in general is just more expansive or what have you. But and so I think it's just a good mindset to have in general. It's like you don't have to be around people that you think are super cool and relevant and popular. It's like everything's like a larger version of high school. You don't have to yeah. be with like the cool kids and you don't have to go to the cool parties. It's like when you see it from the outside in, it looks so glamorous or whatever. It's like yeah. 
I like being in LA. I get invited to premieres and events mm-hmm. and random stuff like that. But it's like I don't FOMO is not really a thing for me. Yeah, as and much you're not geeking anymore. out like, oh my god, Brad Pitt. Because everyone feels the same when they're there too. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Everyone's just kind of like, oh, like, what am I gonna have for to yeah. eat after this or whatever? You know what I mean? But. I think it is cool to like if you're like live streaming in Arizona or if you live in Florida and you're mm-hmm. making like golfing videos or whatever yeah. it may be. It's it's yeah, I don't know. I well, like early in your 20s. It is cool, right? Like when yeah. I first moved out here and I was hanging out with all these viners that I watched, I was like, oh, my God, dude, like Amanda Cerny. Yeah. Like I'm in the presence of all these celebrities. Yeah. But once you get involved with it and in it for so long, you're just like, yeah, someone can invite you to like leonardo dicaprio's house and you're like man i'm good man like you know like yeah but i think the young people that come out here they're so obsessed with like being at the it party and with the it people and yeah you know how it goes people want to hang out with you when you're doing shit right like I know. you're hanging with bieber and shooting with usher like i'm sure people are always hitting you up like oh dude oh dude like the amount of super bowl text i got yeah <laughs> like, yo yo if you need help at the super yeah, bowl yeah. like text me I'm like oh are you gonna be there and then they just like don't answer I'm right just like, all right haven't heard from you in a year but i'm glad yeah. you texted me <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's just how it is out here man <laughs> yeah it is but it is cool because i feel like i'm in a time in my life too because even like when sam was staying here and we we did the podcast just because we're like oh let's just like do something together have a conversation mm. it's like it is cool because we can go like a year without talking to each other or what have you and i feel like the older you get and also just the current time ta- i am in my life it's like i find that i'm just i'm able to like almost rebuild these relationships now where it's mm-hmm. like you bump into people after like a year or two years or whatever and when you're younger it's very much it's like i'm only friends with the people that i'm like working with or that are in yeah. my like little circle of like stuff that's happening but now I, I try to take more time that if i like i bump into someone at a party or a restaurant or a gym i try to be conscious and be like oh dude it was good seeing you like let's grab lunch next week and like i mean it and like actually trying to, i like, mean it yeah that's funny you say that because we all always do that we're like oh dude good to see you let's grab a coffee sometime never hear from him again never hear from him <laughs> like, <laughs> that's so true but yeah i mean time heals all wounds right it's like a breakup like when you if you have a falling out with a friend or you just stop seeing someone time goes by and you kind of forget why yeah so you could just like reignite that relationship back up yeah it is cool and just having excuses to like have a conversation or Mm -hmm. to like find things to do together is super fun that's why i like the podcast yeah like because yeah people if i just invited if you just invited me over you're like hey man you just want to have an hour-long talk i'd probably be like no (laughs) but it's like creating something and like it forces you to have these conversations which is yeah the beauty of a podcast yeah no i love it and again i feel like it is people want to see longer form content they want to because i even find myself like if i'm like just doing daily tasks and i'm like cleaning or i'm doing whatever i'll throw on like a podcast and Mm -hmm. i'll just like put in my pocket or put in headphones and just like i love just having this kind of like background noise but i i think at the source of it you just want to I want to feel like I'm in, I'm connected with someone in like real time or I'm connected to the world in real time. Mm-hmm. That's why I love like when a talk show is on or a good podcast is on or if like the Hollywood Reporter has like the actors round table and you get mm-hmm. to like just hear people's inner thoughts and dialogue. It's like, mm-hmm. I don't know, there's something like super cool about that. That's why I love just talking to other creators because it's like, how, I'm like, where's your head at? Like, where are you thinking about like content? Are you yeah. like, are you constantly th- like thinking about the new formats? Are you thinking about like, you know? But yeah, I mean, I don't know. What was cool with me is like, because you even came up on my For You page, like some of the, um, your podcast excerpts like you were talking about. And what I found was really cool was it was guests that like I hadn't seen before that I hadn't like, um, it's not like a face that you'd be like, oh, look, Charlie D'Amelio is like, or like you're talking to whoever, like the it person is or whatever. But it was just more so, it was just like, it was the story which was at the forefront it was just like this person like had to overcome death or how he's dealing with like trauma or whatever Mm -hmm. it is and like i just love that that's like open and in the air now and people are able just to be like okay you know we're all dealing with like these thoughts or these feelings and like how do we all get through it or how do we like express it together so i I, yeah kudos to you for for doing thank you and to be honest i'm just applying my vlog format to those podcasts like i think a lot of podcast clips just start and i've been making a hook with a like the title the clickbait or whatever yeah and then i do a break and then i start the question and i think something that i do different is like 
a lot of people do these captions that are big and on screen and like have animations and they're like wiping across like one word at a time. I let my captions breathe. So like I'll have like, you know, 42 characters on the screen at a time. So it's like more of a slower pace as mm. opposed to like that fast rapidness. And yeah, I let like the the B-roll over top, like I'll do like whatever, a photo or something. And I'll let that play out instead of like showing it super quick and swiping it away. Yeah. Do you do B-roll for your longer like podcast too, or you just let it play mm -hmm. out? I just let it play out. Nice. Cause I feel like a lot of people don't need to watch yeah, the podcast. They kind of just it. listen. I mean, I do the same thing as you when I'm cleaning or something. I mean, right now I'm going through a breakup. So like I'm on like the, I'm listening to like breakup videos, like how to get over a breakup. I feel yeah. like such a loser, but. <laughs> I mean, no, it helps. But like, it's good to like, yeah. yeah. Cause you need to hear, if you're going through something in life, it's really good to hear like, oh, I'm not the only one that's been through this. And then, and, and, you know, I listen to motivational videos at the gym. Um, whatever, it'll be like Jordan Peterson. It's just like a compilation of people speaking motivate, like the guy that talks about like, if you wanted to be successful, yeah, as hard as you want to breathe, you know, like those are what I listen to. And they have like this very inspiring track underneath it. And just like the repetition, it gets to the point where I've heard these videos so many times, I know what they're going to say, but getting those like positive affirmations in your head and like understanding like everything's going to be okay is like what's really helpful to me. For sure. And there's a saying I love that's like, um, sometimes saying how you feel is powerful enough to change how you feel. Hmm. And I feel like it's the same thing with like hearing like if sometimes hearing what you're feeling or hearing some reassurance, it's like it can be strong enough for that like kind of trigger for you to just be like, okay, it's okay that I'm feeling this or this is what I'm feeling. And now mm -hmm. I can like acknowledge it and like move past it or at least like, or know it's okay to be feeling what I'm feeling and know that like this too shall pass type of mm -hmm. thing. But yeah. How you talk to yourself is extremely important. Yeah. If you're if you're constantly giving yourself negative self-talk, you're going to start to believe it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in a, in a sense, like something that I used to do actually, like with my daily vlogs is I used to say, be positive, be happy, be you. And, you know, what I actually like about that era of my life is I did bring an energy. You know, I brought a performance when I hit, you know, this is how I typically am, right? Just a normal person like talking, whatever. But when I hit record, I'm, oh, I, I forced myself to be happy. And when you do that for long enough, like you actually start to become really happy all the time. Yeah. Like it's like fake it till you make it. It's like fake it until it like starts to become what like it is. It's a habit. Yeah. Yeah. It was like on that subject, it was kind of like funny, like meeting people in vlog mode because there's so many times I would meet people while like for the first time, like while they were vlogging. And mm -hmm. it was just like, or, or like, I'm glad that for you it worked for that like positivity, but there's so many people that I knew that like used all their energy while they're on camera. And as soon as they stopped hitting record, mm. it was just like, zzz, it's like yeah, the, yeah. the life like went out of them or like they didn't like, what, it, they became like a different person. But I think like the healthy version of that is trying to be you at all times. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if w what you're like when the record button is on, is like hopefully what you're like when it's off and hopefully that version both of those versions are like just trying to like exude positivity and happiness and all this stuff because it's like if you are like two different people with it on and off i find it's like it's hard and i think that's where people start to like really lose the juice to mm -hmm. like you know what i mean well that's something i learned too because i would watch youtubers and then i met them in real life and i'm like like, what the hell like why are you miserable <laughs> why are you not the person you are on camera but yeah to be honest a lot of people become you youtubers who are introverts mm. and they kind of like have trouble talking to people or whatever and then they kind of like that's what is like helps them you know like they they're more so to the camera introverted yeah, yeah. rather like, than talking to a person they like is, they need this like safety net it's like the people that need like a guitar or mm -hmm. like have like this little like crutch at all time is like sometimes having that camera is like a a crush I think David Dobrik's actually a pretty shy person. Very. Like when you see, when I see his videos and stuff, he, he seems like he has so much confidence. His laugh, and, you know, it's so infectious. And then like meeting him in person, he's kind of like a little bit more introverted. Yeah. I mean, I go to. I mean, we the last time we saw each other was at his Halloween mm -hmm. party. But like even when he has parties, he's like never. It's at his house and he's never mm -hmm. there. You're like, where is he? And yeah. He like like upstairs in his room or like, I think he likes mm -hmm. being surrounded by people. And a lot of people just like, like being surrounded by people, mm -hmm. but then they, you know, they retreat. It's almost yeah. like, you know, they like being retreat, like to retreat into like their shell. And they like, that helps, that helps them cope. I'm kind of like that, honestly. I love being around people, Yeah. but I, 
when I want to be. Yeah, for sure. And then like, I love going home and it's just me. Yeah. yeah I need that alone time to recharge. Yeah. Especially because, yeah, I mean, this, it is a performance, right? And like, you need to recharge. <laughs> yeah, or without it, you have no energy to give to the art or give to whatever. Um, I guess on on that note, like I always like asking the question, like if you had advice to give to up and coming like creators, like what would it be? Because obviously you touched on like posting all the time, but how would you, I guess, focus on the you know the quality over quantity type of aspect mm. of it? And like, is do you, do you think there is like a certain mindset people should have? Should they be like, oh, I should focus on like short term content or I should like focus on a certain skill or a trait like what do, what do you th advice would would you have given to yourself and would you give to people like now I think the best advice is and this is what I did find five to ten creators that you really enjoy watching and take one piece take one thing from each of those creators that you like and if you have five to ten bring that all into you so that's what I did I mean I liked Casey Neistat how he was more raw and like kind of sloppy with his filmmaking but i liked sam colder devin supertramp you guys how you guys had all these smooth shots the slow motion i liked justin escalona who did these like cinematic sequences i liked david dobrik because he was hanging out with friends and laughing mm -hmm. like he had a built-in laugh track so i took a piece from all those guys that i liked about their one thing and then i made it myself and that kind of like then i you're like okay i'm making content that i enjoy watching I think you should make stuff that you enjoy also watching. And I think, you know, like the best way to grow, I guess, and advice I would give is obviously start with TikTok because that's the best algorithm in your favor. Or Facebook, honestly, don't sleep on Facebook. Like they, they have really good algorithms for people with low follower counts. If that's your goal, grow on that platform first. And then if you want to be a YouTuber, then build an audience on TikTok and then shift it over to YouTube because YouTube is a, is the hardest. Like if you have zero subscribers, growing on YouTube is so, so difficult. Yeah. You know, you got to send it to your friends and family first to get your like at least 10 subscribers because um, the algorithm is just not really built for small people. I mean, that's what I did. I grew on Instagram first. I got to like half a million and then I said, hey guys, I'm vlogging now. Go follow my YouTube. So I, you, you give yourself a little bit of a boost. Um, and then in today's world of content, I think everything's shifting to a niche base. So there's a lot of people picking niches and sticking to those. Make sure it's something that you love. You know, there's a lot of golf channels. Uh, there's a lot of people who have normal jobs that are filming themselves at their jobs and making a side income with it on social media. You know, you got guys that own a pizza shop and they're showing you how to make the pizza. They got people, you know, doing coffee. They're showing you how to make the coffee. So, yeah, I would just say do what you love. Look at five to 10 creators that you love one thing about them and then put those all into you and make it your own. It's great advice. Yeah. And as I think your skill set too is like, yeah, you're a great content creator, but you're also like, it's having that left and right brain. It's like, it's, I find I, I meet a lot of people that are like super, super creative, but like thinking of the structure or the business side of it is like, it, it's not there. Or there's people that are like very analytical and they can mm -hmm. think of like, Oh, I know I need to like have these thumbnails and this is how many times I need to post or this is da 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 but like don't know like the creative side of it or how to like you know what I mean so it's like yeah I well I learned that from Logan yeah. I mean I didn't know anything about I just knew how to make videos you know when I met Logan and being around him for a few years I mean he's very business savvy mm. as you can tell like he's yeah. on his way to try to be a billionaire you know like he really taught me a lot about the business side of things he really taught me a lot about the content, the attention span, what you need to do in a certain amount of time to get attention. Like he, he really, he's got it down to a science. Yeah. H him and Jake have always been like m mm -hmm. the marketers. Like yeah. even when we were just doing in the vine days, it's like, and I think it kind of almost bred this, like, I think they always had each other to compete off of. And then when they moved mm -hmm. into 1600, all of a sudden you were like literally down the hall from like Amanda and mm -hmm. Christian and Rudy and all these people. So it's like in a weird way, it's like the rank zoo of Vine yeah. was all in the building. So I think everyone was just kind of looking at each other and like seeing Lele and Hannah or whatever, like how do I get above this next person? So they were always very savvy at just being like, I cured my color blindness or like, or, or we're fighting, we're beefing, we're not, yeah, yeah. we're like, you know what I mean? So they knew how to like, draw this the eyes onto them and i think um yeah 
Well, yeah. that's another good piece of advice. Not, I mean, yeah, if you want to grow quick, start some drama, talk some shit. <laughs> they did that for yeah. sure. You know, they didn't really care. And you'll learn too. like, yeah, no one wants to get canceled, but over time people forget and it only propels you. It's like whatever that saying is bad. Any publicity is good publicity. Yeah. It really is true. But another a thing that you could take away from them is have someone you're competing with and go neck and neck like don't you don't want that person to beat you you know and i think that's something that logan and jake do really well like they're both on a race right now to who's going to be the billionaire yeah and another piece of advice i guess i would say is know when to transition that's something i struggled with in my late you know i I guess during covid i didn't really know what to do but i knew when to transition i started on instagram and then i saw everybody starting youtube videos so then i started doing youtube videos and then i started a podcast because i saw podcasts were being popular and then I did music, and then now it's like TikTok. You have to know kind of when, I guess, to get rid of a platform and focus on the one that everybody's using. Like you look at everybody now, like David Dobrik, what's he do every day? Posting on Snapchat that, yeah. because that's what his focus is. And, and you know, there's going to be a time when Snapchat probably is not the thing anymore, and he'll, you know, go to the next thing. He'll move to where the money is. like, I mean, Logan's transition, right? He started on Vine. Vine died. He went to Instagram. Instagram, and then he went to YouTube. Then he went to the podcast game. Now he's transitioning into the mainstream with the WWE and built a business. And Jake, same thing. They transition. Yeah. How, of everyone that, like, the Vine days, is, do you still keep in touch with anyone? Or do you find that, like, it's not as much anymore? Because Amanda was mm-hmm. just, just here. It's funny because, like, I lost touch with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But where I live now, like... um batch lives like five minutes away mm. and he runs past the house every day rudy I hadn't spoken to in three years he lives five minutes away and we'll play like soccer together so mm. in a weird way i'm starting to like rekindle a lot of these like friendships but do you find that like you're still friendly with anyone or if i see you yeah, yeah but yeah. i'm not like reaching out really to hang out yeah. with anyone george reached out to me recently oh, actually yeah? to grab like lunch um but i think he's busy also i also think he just wants me to get bieber on the podcast so. mm. <laughs> but I, i'm glad to I see mean, when he's... someone reaches out to you after not talking to him for a long time you know there's something up up <laughs> yeah i mean he's straight up ass but like i also think he probably just wants to get lunch also but yeah. um yeah, I mean, I'm just glad to see people are successful in their own right, too, because it is like, especially coming from a place where it's like, I'm so used to helping other people, like I would help shoot awkward puppets or like whatever, mm-hmm. or like help Usher or Bieber or whatever. I'm like so used to like being like a support where it's like, oh, all of a sudden, like my face is like more recognizable or making more stuff for myself. So it's like whenever I see people that are like, I, I just love seeing the kind of like swap from like, and it's tough, too, because a lot of in this industry if you're like in a certain role people want to keep you in a certain role and they don't want to see you like they don't want to see the fame transfer onto you right right or they don't want to lose a valuable employee Mm -hmm. or whatever it may be so it's like i don't know i think there's plenty of success to go around for everyone it's always been my kind of thing but it's like yeah i mean i'm just glad people fear that i mean back in the day but you gotta have the realization that at some point this person's gonna want to move on you know no one wants to do the same job for the rest of their life. And you could also continue to like, I, I find it's like, I've always, even when I was working with like bigger celebrities or whatever, it's like some people will treat you a certain way, some people will treat you another way, but it's like my my thing has always been like, if you, I'm inevitably gonna grow, everyone's always gonna grow, but if you just like continue to be like a support system, it's like, I'm probably gonna keep working with you mm-hmm no matter what like maybe not in the same like capacity maybe i won't be holding the camera every single time but it's like i'm gonna be more wanting to always help you if you're just like yeah yeah, yeah like like grow go do your thing do like mm-hmm. you know and like just grow like as opposed to trying to keep someone under your thumb or like not letting like trying to not water them so they don't grow into like a full right. tree as a metaphor or whatever it's like you can there's room to grow to get together so it's like even for me, if I am like collaborating or working with people now, it's like I try to just be conscious of just like, yeah. oh, what stuff do you want to do? Do you not like holding the camera? Do you not want to just keep editing? Do you not want to go on these trips? Like what? Like, because it, it, it is fun growing with people as a like instead of like. Like yeah. you said, dude, there's enough success to go around for everybody. I mean, my best editor, his name was Aegon. He lived in Poland. Uh, Dude's crushing it right now. He has like tons of millions of followers on facebook his name's project nightfall cool he used to edit my vlogs and he's bigger than me now like he's built a whole ass brand and company traveling the world like you know and i'm happy for him like he 
like I said, he's from Poland and didn't really have much growing up, and now he's crushing it. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's enough success to go around. So I guess hopefully that gives hope to people listening and watching mm -hmm. to be like, if you feel like you're not successful right now or you're trying to like get over this like hump or whatever, it's just like consistency and just like, yeah, it, you know, it, it could happen at any point. Gotta love the process. It's the only, yeah, or else you're gonna yeah. be exhausted. Can't focus on the finish line, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Well, I'm glad we got to reconnect. Mm -hmm. Me too. It's cool hearing where you're at and everything. Um, yeah, and if for you guys you don't follow Mark, make sure to check him out. His podcast is very, very cool. Check it out on TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, all that stuff. Um, and yeah, stay creative at home, people. Hopefully this inspires you a little bit, but thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me, Appreciate bro. Appreciate it. Jordan Cut, Taylor Cut Films. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>